Hi Dream Team, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another exciting installment of Life is But a Dream with the Max. My name is Lerato Macheta. And I'm Petula Macheta. So hey. good to be back with you guys. Very black. I don't know how to black. I don't know how to say star black. No, look at the young guy. Very good to say black. All right. Good to know. I didn't grow up all, in Sasha. All Sunshine, black. You know? I only know Manio, Southwest. Manio, you know <laughs> Listen guys, today we want to talk about our salvation stories. Whatever. Um, some of you might not know what salvation means. That means that we are saved, sanctified, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Which basically means that um, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our <laughs> Lord and Savior. Yeah. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And um, we believe that He died for our sins. Yeah. What did that journey look like for us? How did we come to know Christ? What are our personal stories? That's just what we want to share with you today. You ready to get into it? Let's get into this one. Come on. It was the summer of 2008. She said, I would the cook the matter from a date. Now raise it last 10 years of matrimonial cake. We celebrate. Now we're stronger together. Never better. Go getters, trendsetters, Black Panthers, the anthem. We the max and we only getting better. Hey. Life is what a dream. <laughs> so family, the reason we decided to share this part of our lives with you is that we just don't we don't believe that you can truly know someone unless you know where they come from mm. you know i think we've shared you know most parts about ourselves but most of you don't really know our journey to you know how we came to the knowledge of christ our journey to salvation and so forth mm. and so on and a lot of people have been asking yeah. so a lot of you have been yeah. asking like about that journey and what it looks like and yes. i imagine you know for people that aren't in christ you know the the curiosity like mm. so what is it about this yes. that you guys are so yeah. infatuated by yeah. um and then for other people you know for some people it's been a struggle you know mm. the journey has been a little bit of a struggle for other people it's just been a breeze it's like this is all i know yes. this is you know yeah. um yeah and it's just really interesting to to learn about different about different people's journeys and how they came to know christ mm. yeah Do should we start with my story? Let's start with yours, babe. <laughs> I think yeah. my, mine is more interesting. Age before beauty. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> so I was actually, I was born in a family. I think as black people, we, we love God. You know, mm -hmm. guys, wherever you go, you go to East Africa, you go to black people love, love God. Yeah. Right, and I grew up in a family where we always prayed. Um, I grew up Catholic. Uh, we used to go to a Catholic church. Hey, when King, you were Holy Mary, <laughs> Mother of God. Yes, wow. I grew up Catholic. Yeah, and um, I think my early me my early memories of um, experiencing God was my mom is. A prayer warrior. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting is that at the time we didn't speak about a relationship with God and, you know, God speaking back to us and mm. whatever. It was just, for us, it was just really that one way communication, you know, sure. but, but I learned that God is someone that you speak to. And I remember uh, my grandmother used to, we used to, all the cousins used to go to my grandmother's house and we used to have prayer evenings, you mm. know, and my grandmother was Catholic, you mm. know, so this thing is not just new age, um, yeah bazalwani things you know mm -hmm. black people have always been praying since the beginning of time and um i remember growing up though i was just very skeptical about this whole bazalwani thing which means mm -hmm. being what's, what's bazalwani born again to be born again you know it was just a foreign concept to me and i think what it also communicated at the time was I felt like it, there was a long list of don'ts, you know, and that's why I rejected it so much. I remember there was a friend of mine. Um, I actually can't share my salvation story without bringing Kitu into the picture. And um, there's an old friend of mine, her name is Kitu, and she got saved when we were in high school. I think we're in the grade, if we were not in grade nine, we're in grade 11. And um, she would share about Christ and God. Mm. And I just thought, it's crazy. I don't know. She was a bit hectic. I think not even hectic, but I think at the time it was such a foreign concept that you have a relationship with God. To me, God was someone that I went to when I wanted something, when I had problems, when I needed to pass exams. And, yeah. and, and, and. So what I mean is for you at the time, 
It was it was a lot. She was hectic. It was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot, lot, yeah. lot. She was that weird yeah. kid. Yeah. And you, your introduction? Yeah. So I grew up in a in a Christian home in a you know born again Christian Pentecostal mm. um, home. Uh, my father was a was a youth pastor. Mm. My uncle was a pastor. My mom. My uncle, who's a pastor, is my mother's brother. Mm. You know, so we 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 grew up going to church. You know, all our lives, and it's mm. it's all I knew. I, I understood the concept um, of of God and Jesus and the Holy Trinity, Father, mm. Son, Holy Spirit in one. And um, went to Sunday school and learned mm. about Adam and Eve and Moses and Noah and Jonah and <laughs> you know, like it yeah. was just new. Um, you know, I can recite the 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 order of the books of the Bible. Yeah. You know, well, the New Testament at least. Mm. Um, you know, it so it was very mm. much um, uh, traditional. You know, in that sense. Sure. Um, uh, definitely um, from a from a head knowledge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just understanding. I understood the religion. Mm. You know. Uh, more than I did the relationship, the relationship. part of things, but but sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we grew up like that, and I'm mm. grateful for that upbringing. You know, I yeah. just just having, I, I I always had a God consciousness. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was always aware mm. of of God. Um, I was always aware of his, of 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 the idea of his divinity. You know. So it's very interesting because our stories, as different as they are, they're quite similar because mm. we've always known God, known about God, but mm. the relationship wasn't there. Sure. Maybe actually when you're speaking, before Kitu actually, I remember in grade eight, guys, there was another girl that stayed like two houses away from my house and they started going to, um, it wasn't Hillsong. It was another ch- Hatfield Christian Church, yeah. and I remember they got saved, um, and they invited us to go to to, to church. Yeah, I was in grade eight, so then when they did the the altar call, you know, they were like, you know, who, who wants to receive Christ as their Lord yeah. and Savior? I raised up my hand, and I actually got bapti- baptized. Okay. I was in Sure, <laughs> like that they were day. Like they were like same time. They were like like that oh, day. You, you ready? <laughs> that day. Yeah, you know, but. I, I didn't understand what it means. I think for me, accepting Christ at the time, it meant I'm not going to swear. I'm not going to lie. Sure, sure. I'm not going to steal. It was the Ten Commandments. It was still very religious. Yeah. I, I, I didn't understand. But what I am sure of is that a seed was planted that day. For sure. Even though I went through life as a, you know, as a teenager, varsity you know, went through struggles, you know, of trying to find myself and experimenting with a lot of things. Mm. God, you know, like, like, like that God consciousness yeah. was with me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so, so my, it, it's, it's weird. Yeah. I'm going to say it like this. My first salvation story. Yeah. Because, because you never actually, you can't, you don't lose your salvation, mm. but unless you, Denounce Christ, yes. but you don't lose yeah. your salvation. Right? Yeah. But my, fir- I didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, my father actually led us to Christ. Oh, yeah. So we were all sitting. We used to sit at home and we used to have devotions mm. as a family. And my father would lead devotions and we'd have Bible study. And mm. he was sure. an amazing <laughs> man. <this one. laughs> So, he was yeah, or he is? He, he is, he <laughs> okay. is. But I'm just remembering, yeah. I get I you grow up and you're like, ah, my father. You, you, you become ah, familiar. You, right? Yeah. And then when you start to think back, you realize that man, he was actually quite amazing. So mm. um, so we used, to, we used to have devotions okay. together as a family and we'd all sit in the lounge mm. and some people on the floor, some people on the couch or whatever. We're and five kids or two. So, yeah, so the there were seven of us. Gugurang. You know, um, yeah. and I remember one day he he kind of uh, broke down the whole concept. How old were you? You know, I was young. Yeah, I was like young. I must have been like seven, maybe. Yeah, you know, and he broke down the whole concept of of salvation. Mm. You know, um, and then he was like, "So, <laughs> do you want it? <laughs> do you wanna? You know?" And I was like. 
Mom. And plus, you were you were like a very good child. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I did what my parents told me. Yeah. You know, um, and that's and that's when I that's when I accepted Jesus, Jesus. Christ as my Lord and yeah. Savior. And yeah, and I was really young. Um, how much ownership I had of mm. that of that decision at the time, mm. I don't know. But like you're saying, mm. a seed was planted, you know, and I know then that it was God being like, I yeah. for sure. Let's roll. You know what I'm interested to find out, babe? Yeah. Um, because you were, you grew up in the church, you know, yeah. and you sort of inherited salvation mm. because your parents were, you know, Christians and mm. they were born again Christians and they had a relationship with Christ. Was it yeah, difficult? Inherited. Yeah. Yeah, inherited in the sense that yes. you were born yeah, into yeah, it, right? Sure. So was it difficult for you to to own it? And um because you you and I obviously have these conversations. Mm. You also went through a stage where you experimented in life and you I wouldn't call it a stage. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a stage. It was not a stage. It was a life. It was, <laughs> it was a lifetime. It was a period. Yeah, it was a period. A that's, period that's the right of, word. of just really being in the wilderness yeah, and being yeah, lost and everything. Sure. Um do you what was your turning point? When did you own it? So to answer your first question, yeah. um yeah working out my salvation was very hard Mm. um it was very hard because i couldn't i couldn't distinguish between what was real and what Mm. was religion i couldn't distinguish between when it was a performance and when it was an experience Mm. you know and um there were all these pressures of um i i started serving when i was nine Mm. You know, um, I was in the worship team by the time I was 12. I was the musical director by the time I was 16. Sure. You know did what I mean? Talk, like, did you talk about serving? Nearly Asha, guys. Yeah, I was nine. in Asha at nine. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so, and so it, I was doing all the right things. Mm. Um, but, and no, no, that's not fair. I was doing all the right things and I definitely had a God experience. Mm. But what hadn't happened was I hadn't been in the wilderness. Got you. So Got you. I didn't know any different. Mm. It was like, this is what we do. Mm. This is, you know. Um, so I didn't really make the choice. Mm. Mm. Sure. If that I makes sense. I, yeah, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't confronted with life and death yeah you know it was like donna here's life i was uh, like sure let's you know what i mean and then as i grew up mm, then i was like wait a minute mm, you know um but yeah um it, and then to answer your second question yeah um when did i own it i, I really I, I i really feel like it's i i own it daily Sure. I I can't say that there's there a, defining a defining moment, moment you know, sure. um, because every day I pray and I say, Lord, give me mm. this day, my daily bread. Give me what I need today to continue to. And the Bible tells us how God pursues us. You know what I mean? Mm. But just for me to be positioned um, in a place where I can be found. Sure. You know what I mean? So you don't think you went through a phase where you rededicated your life? Like there wasn't that, because I remember mine very clearly. Okay, tell me. I think for me, I was just really tired, and, and you know, when you talk about experimenting, I think we can be honest on this platform. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I went through days in in high school, even varsity of just ratchetness. You know, mm-hmm. the drinking, the partying, boys, and mm-hmm. you know, and and I think for me. And some people are like, ooh, us peto lawe na. So long. <laughs> you know? and, and what I love about Christ is that when he's done with you, ahona trees. Yeah. You know, but I think we wouldn't be honest if, if people just thought that we were born, you know, uh, uh, pursuing pers- pursuing holiness. You yeah. know, I don't know anything about pursuing holiness. Everyone around me was was living la vida loca. For sure. You know, 
nearly vibe like there was no sense of you know pursuing holiness there was that there was Gita and I remember Gita used to her presence used to offend me mm-hmm. you know because her light because you know when, when you are pursuing holiness your light will offend certain people mm-hmm. you know and, and mm-hmm. you'll annoy other people you mm-hmm. know people will automatically feel judged mm-hmm. just by being in your presence and you're not even saying anything mm-hmm. you know and um, I remember I, I don't know what it was, but I was so tired of the mundaneness, is it mundaneness yeah. of life? Yeah. You know, um, I think at the time I was about 21, 22. I had just started working mm. and um, I was done with my degree because obviously you're pursuing this life. Your parents tell you, you're going to school, you're going to study, you're going to get your degree and you're going to mm. start working. That was it for me. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't even know what purpose was. Mm. That was a foreign concept. You know, mm. we, we never mm. discussed that in the home. And I remember there was a turning point in my life where I, I had just started working and I felt like, now what? You know, I've, I've, I've graduated, I'm working now, sure. I had gotten my first place, I'd gotten, you know, my, my dad had helped Your me car. to get my car, yeah. you know, and I was just like life just, and I was in this bad, I was in a relationship, but I was in a very toxic relationship and, you know, we're still, you know, chasing something out there, going out, partying, whatever, and I was just like, this feels so empty, mm. like what is the meaning of all? All of this, sure. you know, and That's I remember amazing. I reconnected with Gitu again, the same girl that, you know, a friend, a friend of mine who got saved in high school. And then she started working at the company that I was working at. Mm. Right. And we reconnected and she started a Bible study at work. I think I was about I was about 22. I'm 37 mm. years now. So I don't know how many. No, years. you're not. I am, guys. Get her for this kind. So Kitu started Bible study and she started teaching the word, you know, and I didn't understand that you could actually read the Bible and get so Mm. much revelation and, you know, Mm. and I remember during that time, I think I was at home and I was watching a message and I actually rededicated my life to Christ. Mm. There was an altar call and they said, you know, if you feel like you have, you know, because as Lerato said, you can't get saved again and again you get yeah, you saved once yourself right yeah. so i i was saved in, in grade eight and i just went on with my life because i didn't understand it and then i started pursuing god i started pursuing christ and baby what happened blew my mind mm. i literally found my purpose when i cultivated a relationship with god yeah I, I it, it, it became you know it wasn't crystal clear but i understood that Beyond, you know, just looking for a job, looking for, you know, building a, a, ho- a house, buying a car, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. There's more to life than that. For sure. There is a greater purpose. For sure. You know, and, and the reality is some people don't know that there's something called purpose. But I feel sure. like you can only tap into that once you tap into the one who made you. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I agree with you. I think my, yeah. my, my experience of, 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 of a defining moment is mm. I'm constantly having yeah, defining, defining moments. moments. That's amazing. And, and it's, it's, it's because God deals with different areas of my life. So it's, mm. a, so it's a continuous um, salvation yeah. almost. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. a, it's like a continuous like, okay, now we're going to deal with that. You know, and I have like a, like a crazy experience and I'm like, whoa, mm. you know, you know, let me come back. Let me sure. come. And I like the idea. I like the idea of, of a, not, not being able to, to say on such and such a date, yeah. you know, I, you know, uh, I don't know why I just, mm. cause I'm just weird. Um, but also I just like the idea of constantly rediscovering this mysterious god mm. you know um just when you think yeah. that you figured it out just when you think you know what i mean yeah. then then he just shows you another side of his face and you're like mm. what sure. how when yeah. I, you know um so so yeah so yeah um sure. i i think i think i think today i can confidently say though that mm. um i'm closer to 
to who he created me to be than I've yeah. ever been in my life. Yeah, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Um, and incredible. I'm happy about that. Yeah. yeah. So I think like you know when when God find me found me mm. you know when God find me there's a song by is it William McDowell it says I won't go back I to the way I back, used to be to the way I used to be or used to be mm-hmm. guys please find that song William McDowell I won't go back baby like I think when God found me I was so and I hadn't really gone through like big life changing moments you know but i think a lot of us you might have everything in your life but there's that emptiness mm. inside of you and we try to fill that void with things you know with 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 going out with drinking some people people have different vices with mm. pornography with um drugs with you know but there's there's this thing that you just can't fill fill mm. you know because only only Christ can fill that void for mm. you. Mm. You know, and I think when 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 God I always say that God found me, I didn't find him, you know, my life changed for the better. And I actually don't think I would have met you had I not found Christ. Cuz I wouldn't be at church first of all, cuz I saw you at church. Uh, I think I think <laughs> even even if we had met. Yeah. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. No? Because I fell in love with the God in you. Yeah. And I remember distinctly saying that to you mm. and feeling that. I remember distinctly being like I know you. So, sure. like I recognize the light in you sure. and I miss it. And I want to go back to it and mm. you embody everything that that light is. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, my goodness, when I met you, you were all Yeah. I was what? On <laughs> fire. Yo, guys, you know guys, I, mean? I need to get... You know why? And, and, and so... And so, and so, <laughs> you know, so even if we had met... Yeah. I... Had you not been in that place... Yeah. I wouldn't have seen you. Got you. Guys, I used to be that girl. Now, if you had issues, you're like, Peto, I've got... Can I let my heart? She'd be like, oh, I'm like, no. I'll fast for you. I'll fast for you. Yeah. I, you know what and and I think I I I also I miss that that young Christian you yeah. know that baby faith you know yeah. that because because I feel like you grow sometimes sometimes you grow in faith and you grow in the Lord and and now you know too much I want to ask you a you question know? yeah a last question before we go yeah Are we going already? I'm, What? I'm enjoying this I conversation. Know. I, know. I know. So we've yeah. been trying to keep our episodes to 30 minutes. Hey guys, um, papa. So, so what is your favorite memory? Mm. As far as your an experience that you had with God. Can you think of one? Like when I think I think for me it was when I was when I got the gift of speaking in tongues. Okay. And I remember I hadn't I hadn't even rededicated my life for that long. Mm. You know, I had just started coming to Grace. I think maybe like three months later, but I came at such an opportune time because I remember um uh, uh they were teaching about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And there's just something about you know guys when they say faith comes by hearing by hearing the word of God, it's mm. it's it's true because There was a series, and I think it was like a five-week series mm. where they were talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and we were just studying that. And I remember at the time I was actually single. I would go back to my flat after, you know, church, and I would read the scripture. I would spend time in the Word and dissect the Word, and I actually received, you know, the gift, the gift. of speaking of of praying in mm. tongues. And I remember that was the that was just amazing. Mm. You know, and and that also seem sort of cemented mm. that thing. Guys, mudimu uteng, mudimu apela. You know, yeah. God is alive, and and I think a lot of people. Um, I remember my sister was saying the other day, "Hey, Migs." My sister was like, "I struggle with the concept of when people say God said." Yeah. What is that? What is that? Yeah. You know, and guys, yeah. God says, "Hey." God speaks, God, God speaks yeah, yeah, you know, sure. but God, 
And 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 thing is, my sister is weird though because she dreams dreams. Mm. So God speaks to you, Migo. For sure. <laughs> right? Because sure. she dreams dreams, and that's mm. that's another way of how God speaks to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I went to a church to a youth camp mm. um, many years ago. One of the youth, <laughs> youth camps that I went yeah. to. And um, I remember being at this youth camp, and I was I was lost. Mm. I was a very lost young man. I literally. What did lost look like to you? I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> why so are you smiling? no, because 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 I was a lot. That's why. I oh, is like, it? No, only too much. <laughs> um, no, I was I was lost in the sense that. Um, uh, you're gonna make me cut this out now. Okay, no, you don't, if you're not comfortable, Wait. if you're not comfortable no, let me find a way. to say it, no, then don't say babe, it. I'm comfortable to say anything, but afterwards you're gonna be like, babe, I don't know if you should say that. <laughs> so wait, let me think wow. of. No, am I lying? So, so naturally the gag order. Yeah. Wow. Am I lying? with the one to love it anyway. Okay, so let me think of a way to say it. I yeah. was, I was, I was in the world. Mm. I, 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 I'll tell you what. I'll share my story mm, one, one day. day. Today is not that day. Yeah. I'll share my story. Yeah. But I was very much in the world. I was very much lost, and I went to this youth camp, mm. and there were, pr- oh my, I mean, there were these prayer sessions. Like, yeah. if, you know, these youth camps where like you wake up at six o'clock to pray. Mm. And then you have breakfast, and then you go and you pray, mm, mm. and then you and then you pray. Mm. And then I was just like, "Who Yo. sent you so to the camp? I, Did your parents send you there?" I mean, babe, I'm practically family. I had to be there. It wasn't oh, like it was a church camp. Just, just a, yeah, it was a church <laughs> camp. I was like, ah, okay, you know. And, uh, um, and I remember getting to this to this church camp, and. Um, every prayer session that mm. they had and also it was it was it was one of those things where like i'm a teenager i'm like mm. what 13 14 people you're are wh- like you're wilding out yeah people are laughing in the spirit i'm like really <laughs> it's just like <laughs> see now i'm like now? no guys people are falling people are falling now yeah. and they're laughing in the spirit i was just like wow this is a lot <laughs> <laughs> so what so what did i do i yeah. slept Every session. Ev- at camp. At camp. Every session, I sat on the chair. There was a desk here. There, oh there were like bunkers. Yeah. And I put my head down and I crashed. Sure. Like the whole camp. Sure. I came home. Hmm. And I was different. Sure. So God... God found you in your sleep. Bruh. Like the, the Holy Spirit ministered Bruh. to you like, in your sleep. You know when people talk you, and you know when people talk about the presence of God and how sure. you how you'll never be the same sure. like how you Guys, I slept. Like I mm. was you, you know you know I realized I was I was speaking about this. Uh, there's a show that I anchor called Kingdom Culture and mm. we were talking about this offline, right? Yeah. And I was saying there is nothing that I could have done. There's mm. nothing that I did to deserve my wife walking into my life. I wasn't mm. positioned properly. Sure. I wasn't like, like, but God had an appointment with me and he sure. was like, hey man, right? Now this is the story of my life. Mm. When I was at that camp, I slept. I came home and mm. there was just something different. different. And I wanted to to serve people mm. and I wanted to lo- and I I, I, I I was suddenly irritated by dirt mm. like something small but I was mm. like why no let's clean let's sure. you know let's make sure and I, I wanted to make people tea and mm. you know just figure out like wh- like sure. how can I help you what do you need from me and mm. you know um, and then the longer I was out of that environment then I just yeah. kind of went back to my default setting but that's my memorable sure. experience that's amazing and I think baby you know we could have this conversation forever because when we start talking about God sometimes we don't stop mm. you know um, I think for me, I was actually thinking about, you know, when you're earlier, when you're talking about as much as there isn't 
there wasn't that really defining moment but you're constantly growing in in Christ I think where I am now as far as my salvation story I'm I I've changed a lot you know I I marvel at what God has taught me over the years and what the Holy Spirit has cultivated in my life mm-hmm. you know just in terms of the even in Christianity the the Christian that I was and the Christian mm-hmm. that I am now you know and I think because also when I when I when I found Christ, when God found me it was also still about yes I had this relationship but I wanted to be this perfect Christian mm-hmm. you know I thought Christianity was about being perfect you know and I I still had now that list you know I I became that person that I used to reject mm-hmm. You know that Christian that I used to reject and I think that's why sometimes as Christians we can come across as very judgmental mm. you know because there's this picture this perfect picture of the perfect Christian and there's nothing like that we are all figuring it out you know God is constantly working on us and I remember I was that Christian babe like I was a rebuke kind of Christian mm. like I would yay Paul you yeah. know yeah. and now as I grow in the Lord I'm like we sometimes want to do the work of the holy spirit mm. you know my stance right now is if if i'm if i'm not if i'm not going to pray for you i'm not going to rebuke you because sometimes our rebuke good. is judgment that's good you yeah. know cuz now yeah. you you you're calling someone out but then how some i you forgotten about that conversation but you've broken someone mm. and you're not praying you know, for and them. you're not praying for them yeah. you know so i just really love how the holy spirit just like he works on you constantly and i would mm. imagine that another 50 10 years from now we'll be sitting in a different setting and we'll be different yeah. people grown grown <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, so yeah, so the sure. more we pursue god and we pursue the things of god he he constantly just shows himself so strong in our lives yeah yeah that's beautiful that is beautiful <laughs> Guys, yeah, can you see I'm getting tired? I'm like, yeah, it's late. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, that's our salvation story, yeah. babe. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I don't regret it for one second. No. Um, no. I remember asking my mom one day. I said, mm. "What if you get to the end of your life and you find out one day that Christianity was all a farce?" A farce. Mm, and there's no heaven and there's no heaven yeah. and there's no hell and there's and no there's god no god there's and no there's no jesus. devil there's no jesus i was like you are breaking your back for yeah. this jesus of yours what what yeah. what are you what will you do if you die and sure. nothing and what did she say and she said to me i would not regret one day sure. of having yeah. lived the way that I lived yeah. with Christ. Yeah. And I never forgot that. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa, that's sure. crazy." Like wow. she's her 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 life with Christ was that fulfilling that yeah. she was like, "Even if it's a lie." Yeah. I'm good. No, definitely Christ has really that's offered amazing. me a life of purpose and I mm. what what your mom was saying, it I share that sentiment. I resonate mm. with that because without god i would be mm. so lost i know that i would be out there in the world looking for something chasing something you know i when i found christ, i found myself the day christ found me yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely i always say <laughs> i always say whoa without christ i would, would be, be a, a problem be a rubbish. <laughs> yeah i do always say that and then my wife would say baby can't say that <laughs> no but you know you would be you are not you yeah would be. yeah no i i would i would yeah. i would be a rubbish guys. i think we would all be rubbishes i would be an a grade <laughs> there are levels to there these levels things. to these things yeah guys i need jesus. jesus we all need jesus i need jesus <laughs> Yeah. Some more than and, others. Yeah, no, some. no, no. We all need Jesus. <laughs> we all need Jesus. All right. Guys, all thank right. you so much thank always. Thank you so much for, um, family. Yeah, for tuning yeah. in. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for That's sharing. Really cool. You know, I knew yeah. parts of it. I knew parts of yours as well. Yeah. 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 But you didn't know I was Catholic. 
You forgot. I think I forgot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I went to a Catholic school. I know yeah. all the... But thank you so much to our parents, you know, yeah, for yeah, praying yeah. for us. Yeah, you know, for sure. Kidu, you know, if you ever happen to watch this show, you played such an important part yeah. in my salvation. My mm. mom, you know, mm. my grandmother. Yeah. You and know? everybody that continues to and pray for us. And everyone that continues yeah. to pray for us. All right. Uh, Amazing. Shout out! Shout out! All right. Look, shout out. Shout out. <laughs> All right. You, d- you go, them. babe. You go. Okay. You do it. So. Well. Last time, apparently, I was going, lo, 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 lo. Okay. I'm going to start. Franca Festus. Hi, we see you. All the way from and Nigeria. Yeah. Listen. And Mukwena. What's up, and Hello, and Masabata Mshongo. Hello, Masabata. What's up, family? Kumzile Masangu. Ratombele. Zane Lloyd, um, Fearless, I love that. Nomsle Level, mm-hmm. Nivia, Naivia Matabata. Shout out, fam. I hope I'm saying the name right. Mbumi K, Mbonani. Yeah, yeah. Kitan Damu. Shout out to you, Mahali Peter. Mahali Silepe. Yeah, yeah. Wow, guys. Um, G Marie. What's up, G Marie? Rifile Luate. What's up, family? Sedem. Edison, Edison vlogs. vlogs. We see What's you. Up? We see you guys. We see you. Oratile Chauka. Mm-hmm. Hi, Oratile. Oratile is, a, is a, an OG. OG, Come on. OG. Come on. And then, last but not least, okay, I'll do two. Nelly Sanjinga and Tabi Samsung. Guys, we always appreciate you yeah. for all of the comments, all of the feedback. Even yeah. when we don't respond, trust. We are there. We are there. In sp- Yes. And truth. Yes. Uh, please remember to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share, mm-hmm. and turn on your notifications to know every time we upload a new yeah. video. This is just rolling off my tongue now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Turn on your Listen. notifications every time uh, to know every time we upload a new episode. And this, ladies and gents, has been another <laughs> incredible installment of oh, Life is But a Dream. With the marks. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Peace and blessings, people. Bye bye. One time. We only getting better, eh? Life is but a dream.